was the successful completion of the All Progressive Congress presidential primaries, we discussed the big takeaways and Tony A. Princeville is saying that Tinubu's victory is a lesson for southern Nigeria. And Dumebi Kachiku beats Kingsley Mogalu, Chukuka Moye and others to win the African Democratic Congress presidential ticket. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacom. Former governorship aspirant for the 2023 elections in River State Prince Toyin Princewell has said the emergence of the um, All Progressive Congress's presidential candidates Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu and former Vice President Atiku Abubakar as the People's Democratic Party's flag bearer should teach the Southern geopolitical zone a lesson in unity. Now, Prince Will, while reacting to the emergence of Tinubu yesterday, said the 2023 presidential elections between Atiku and Tinubu would be interesting to watch. Prince Will noted that southern Nigeria, geopolitical zones of South, South, Southeast and the Middle Belt have been taught a good lesson. Well, joining us to debunk this is Charles Otu and Achike Chude, both political analysts. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Maybe Great. Great. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to start with you, um, Charles, because I, I know what um, Achike somewhat thinks. Um, but do you think that there's a lesson to learn? Because looking at the scenario, he, he, put to, he put side by side what took place or transpired during the PDP's um, special convention and that of the APC. And, and he made reference to the fact that the Southeast, the South South, and of course the Middle Belt have been taught a good lesson. And I'm wondering, was there really a lesson, a lesson in all of this, especially in terms of unity? Thank you very much, Marianne. Thank you for having me once again. Uh, the, the fact remains that uh, what played out during the APC presidential primary is a lesson for not just the party, but the entire nation. First of all, the first takeaway for me is the fact that that particular exercise, you know, portrayed so much about how the government of President Muhammad Buhari has been run in the past seven years. You see, we saw a lot of individuals shifting of postponement, reactions and counter reactions. At some point, the party will say, look, we've trimmed down the people in the race. The number to five, we've trimmed down to ten, well, we've trimmed down to further to two, up to three. And that's continued. Uh, it's really a big lesson, particularly for the southern geopolitical zone of the country, because in as much as as a South Easterner, I would say that the people of Igbo Nation who were in the race uh, were not putting their best footing because. Tinubu, for instance, did not come to the Southeast for campaigns. But he had people who were on ground working for him. I could remember a couple of times people tried to engage some of those aspirants from the Southeast. And their opinions were simple. Uh, some of them claimed they were doing so much. That, for me, has taught us the lesson that doing so much may not be enough. That picking a party's presidential ticket involves a whole lot of works. It talks the Southeast that, look, there are instances it gets to, for instance, where some of us from the Southeast, we are not expecting. I am from a boy state, for instance. I am from the same boy, Southeast Victoria Zone, with the incumbent governor of the state and the former minister of science and technology, Dr. Bonayot. They, two aspirants that were keen in this contest, are from the same uh, local government. Not just the same house or local government, they are from the same Uburu community. Mm. Uburu is a, a, a community in Nebraska that has about 14 villages. At some point, I was thinking that pressure would have been brought on somebody like uh, either the incumbent governor of the state or the former minister of science and technology to step down for one another. So the South East could see a little bit of what's played out through the many aspirants that stepped down for 
uh, Asiwa Dibola Tinubu. So for me, we, we the South underrated Tinubu, and we thought maybe that there was a war or a misunderstanding between Tinubu and his camp, and then the Northern uh, uh, Power Oligarchs. At the end of the day, what we saw play out in that election was shrewd hard work play out for Tinubu, who ordinarily uh, people were thinking that, okay, maybe since Lawan is the only person in the race, as a slave president who has galvanized a lot of forces, even including some of the people in the South, speaking for him, like people like Kojiz Okalo, you know, uh, being a good friend of uh, Imbo State Governor, uh, uh, Hope Zabima, people were thinking that the North could rally around Lawan, and that made some of the practitioners to be so quick to judge that for Lawan to remain the only man standing in the race from the North, that there must be something in the offing, there must be a card to be played by the North. Mm. But in all of it, we saw a Buhari cabal that is not in control. We saw a national chairman of the party that is not in control, in control of the party. Uh, we also saw a Buhari that shows himself creditably to be democratic in the entire process. Mm. He, uh, he made a decision and which people would comment, no matter how you see it, the fact that he didn't interfere, he didn't make a voice, he didn't give his voice to any of the parties, including the ministers that resigned from his cabinet, including even his second in command, Vice President uh, portrayed to me that uh, Buhari really wanted a transparent process. It also portrayed to me that uh, who were expecting a, a smooth ride, who were expecting to be endorsed, who were expecting to say where is the justice? And the justice will be that the not will look the other way and uh, support them. Okay. Instead of working very hard for the ticket like Tinubu did. It showed to me that the politics of today is politics of money. Aside, 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 aside from the fact, that, I, I'm sorry, I just want to, I want to quickly pick, take you up on something that you just said before I go to Achiki. You did say that the, the, the Southeast did not necessarily put out or put its best foot forward. And in terms of personalities, because I'm guessing that that's what you're talking about, who are these best foots? Because, I mean, we saw so many people from the Southeast. We saw Erochus. We saw... I mean, and I'm talking about across the APC and the PDP, we, we saw a Peter Albi who's now moved to um, the Labour Party. We saw the Airborne State Governor. Um, and really, politically, who are the strongest, uh, aside from these ones who had thrown their hats into the ring? And when you're talking about their best foot forward, what exactly do you mean? I mean, be, because these people are the ones that we saw. Thank you very much, Maryam. Thank you once again. Uh, the, the people in the Southeast that would have been considered the best, people would have read them and their antecedents. The names you mentioned, Russia Setrosha was the pretender in the race. He was never in the race. You saw him speak all the dialects, all the languages across the country, and you saw how it turned out that he got his role. By that, I mean that somebody like Dr. Ben Mayama, for instance, whose antecedent is better known, should have been a rallying point for all the other aspirants from the South. I'm not saying he doesn't have his uh, nuances or his uh, shortcomings or his shortfalls. But if the South is started this agitation, give it to us. Where is the justice? Is this our turn? And, they were, mm, uh, and you didn't find the likes of Ojis of Carlo, for instance, and doesn't a slave president, Ahmed Lawan. And even saying, look, let it be that if any other part of the South should take it apart from the South, let this power return to the North. You heard the statement, you read the statement of course, what is Okalu issue before the primaries, far long before the primaries, justifying why it should be Southeast or no other power that should be supported by the South. I mean, uh, I did it that apart from somebody in the mood of Dr. Ben Mayano, who did not also trust his antecedents. Who also have garnered vast range of experiences, such as former Abba governor and all that. But I didn't see the likes of Omahe, for instance, as being real contenders in the race. Okay. Uh, give it to him that he got uh, the eight votes from uh, the delegates from a point, as it were. Cut across the southeast, 
many elites in the southeast would not rally around Anomahe, even if he had the APC presented to that district. That's the fact. Why? Because of his antecedents. Okay. Uh, the agitators in the southeast, IPOB, and others, are all a lot of issues that people expected him as a governor, for instance, being the southeast governor's own chairman, to lead discussions around. Okay. But that didn't happen. We didn't see that happen. Okay. I want to go. Uh, to... Quickly, I'll come back to you. Let me go to Achike. Achike, from all of the things that Charles is saying, he's trying to say that maybe the Southeast is the problem of the Southeast. Or maybe the Southeast, the South South, and of course the Middle Belt are their own problems. What are your thoughts? Achike, I think you're muted. Um, Achike, can you hear me? Um, I think that you're muted and you need to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Um, okay. I'm going to try it one, one more time. All right. I'm going to toss to back to Charles. Charles, um, so just like, um, Tony Prince Will has said, um, that we need to learn a lesson in unity. If, if the call for the Southeast and the power needs to return to the South and the Southeast was saying, give us a, a, you know, a chance at this presidency. Uh, I mean, the, the, sound, the sound of that call was very loud. But then when we look at how much work was put in to also back that call, there seems to be zero. And that's why I asked the question I asked to Achike, could it be that the Southeast is the problem of itself? And, and could that be Dito for the Southwest, uh, sorry, the South South and the Middle Belt? Uh, thank you. If uh, uh, Achike is not back, I can uh, Go ahead. Just make a brief remark on that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the problem about the Southeast apart from the lack of unity among the leaders of the party, Ohanez Njigbo, as the largest socio-political, uh, socio-cultural organization in the party, met the bulldog in the whole exercise, both in the PDP and the APC. You cannot continue to issue press statements, these are your sons, these are your fathers, these are your friends, these are your leaders, and there was no platform to bring these aspirants together, to say, look, you saw the running point, you saw the way the South, the Southwestern aspirants. You saw a number of times the Tinubu was able to rally around the South, uh, Southwestern aspirants in the presidential race of APC. You saw the Hispanic, I mean, the uh, state governor, Kari de Kari, you saw a lot of them rally around. Remember that, yes, one good or the other have been done there by the, uh, by, by, uh, 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 Tinubu during the time he was there uh, uh, in power. You didn't see that happen in the Southeast. I am saying it's a big lesson for us because why it is a big, why we should be at the receiving end. Why we take knocks on the other, our other southern brothers for not even withdrawing from the race. I want to say that power is never given by taking. That is a well-known established political principle. It is, it is never said in politics that uh, it is the turn of this before every other person goes to sleep. So for the Southeast, First is to blame is Ohane Zembibo. The Ohane Zembibo social cultural group were only backed. And there was no force, not even a meeting. Not, not, never did we hear that the Ohane Zembibo union, as, as an administration, called the authorities together to say, look, um, this is the, uh, the, 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 the person who think the cap will fit most, and the rest of Nigeria will rally around. Please, let's go to this, uh, towards this direction. We, we didn't see that happen. And uh, that is why I said, and I am, I am repeating it, that why we blame the Southwest for coming once again after 16 years in power to take what we think belongs to us? But we didn't do our work. Our leaders did not do their best. We didn't put our best foot forward. And that is the end of truth. Okay. I think, Achike, I think Achike is back. So let me come to Achike. Achike, I, 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 I want to know, have there, are there lessons that need to be learned? Just as I asked Charles at the beginning. And again, looking at what he said, and even what Toye is saying about the, the 
you know, banding together of our societies in the south, in the southeast, in the south, south, and in the middle belt. What what could you possibly think is responsible for us not uniting, or even coming together and banding behind ours, just as we see the other zones do? Yeah, well, uh, I think the uh, Tony Prince will uh, did not establish the context for which he made on which he made that statement. There should have been a context because he just. I made a statement. If you look at the political history of this country, I think it's obviously wrong, unless it's talking about recent political history. In the sense that, um, uh, uh, in the sense that uh, the southeast was never in the in the mix, in the frame of things when it comes to pre you know, a south president from the south. Southeast was never in the mix. Southeast has not contributed anything significant uh, to the APC as a political party. Uh, you know, of course, you know, Southeast is more the enclave of the PDP, and the PDP has done very well in the Southeast all this while. And, you know, so it was always going to be very difficult. And if you're looking at equity, if you're looking at, you know, politics and then dishing out um, favors or, or, or patronage, uh, you know, on the basis of uh, work that has been done, on the basis of uh, achievements that have been done for the party, and then the, the, the presidency would obviously go to the Southwest because the Southwest made, to a large extent, their involvement uh, in 2015 made the, uh, the I mean, it, it gave power to the APC at the center, not the Southeast. And so from that, from that perspective, I think the Southeast did not uh, deserve the presidency. Uh, but I mean, if you're talking about the PDP, I would make that case and say, yes, the PDP uh, ought to have produced uh, a presidential candidate from the southeast, of course, but that is a completely different thing. So, from that perspective, it did not, it did not, the, the southeast or the south side did not deserve the presidency of this country, if that is the basis for allocating political positions. That's that, that's one. Then, two again, if we are saying talking about uh, maybe the southwest being uh, playing you know, politics better, and then you can only say that that has happened in the southwest only in the past seven years, only in the past seven years. And that the AP, the, the Southeast, has played politics better, and perhaps the South South, you know, all this while in terms of its alliances with the North, because it has always been the Southeast and the South South that have been in alliance with the North all of these years. The only time uh, the Southwest went into an alliance with past segments of the North was in 2015 when the APC was formed, and the Southwest has benefited from that. Uh, you know, so we, we must, you know, look at these things, uh, you know, in perspective. Yeah, but beyond that is the fact that, it, you know, a, again, uh, for the APC to have uh, given the, the presidency to the Southeast, it, may, it would have meant that uh, the Southwest would have uh, for, forgone, forfeited their, their ambition uh, for the presidency. And of course, that is not going to happen because power is never given, it is taken. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, one other, uh, you know, uh, area you know, I want to look at is the fact that. It's unfortunate that we find us, uh, ourselves talking about uh, presidency to south, presidency to southwest and south south and so on. What the impression one has is that uh, this is just uh, an elitist game, you know, game, and that is actually what it is. Because if you look at what has happened with the presidency of this country in the past seven years and at previous times, the country remains mad in all kinds of uh, social, economic, political contradictions. You know, so. Uh, 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 the, 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 like I said, it's just the, the, the recent, uh, the past seven years that uh, the, you could say that the Southeast, I mean, Southwest played a policies that has favored it at this particular time. But, but, you know, if we should have any level of uh, disappointment, it should be with the PDP and not uh, with the APC, because it was the PDP that was supposed to have an obligation to the Southeast on the basis of the fact that the Southeast has not enjoyed the presidency for quite some time. I mean, for a long time, we've never. And then the fact that the Southeast has contributed handsomely, uh, you know, to the PDP over the years from 1999 to date, mm -hmm. and has gotten nothing, uh, you know, at this particular point in time. So it's not a combination of South, South, you know, uh, uh, Middle Belt, Southeast, and then and then the South South. I think it is. It had everything to do with one man's ambition, and that is Atiku's ambition to become president. And so, uh, you know, the, the right kind of political consideration that should have been given to the Southeast was obviously not given uh, to the Southeast. And, and, but don't forget the North also. I, it's, it's, it's just about not even the Southwest or Southeast or South South. The, not, the entire South has to come together to act as a counterweight, political counterweight to the North. 
Now you have the southwest that is divided, with, you know, uh, south south the uh, south that is divided with the southwest going, you know, uh, uh, with the APC and all that. So ultimately, in terms of the proper balance of power that is needed to uh, to check the excesses of one region against the other, we do not have that in the south. Uh, you know, and so I think that uh, there should be a more meaningful relationship within the south. Okay. Uh, you know, the three regions of the south and the parts of the south, uh, the middle bed that are sympathetic also to the south. Let's look at, talk, still talking about the southeast, let's look at the uh, message of um, Obonaya Onu on that day while he was trying to present, you know, his case for presidency. Although uh, he also said um, uh, that he played a huge role, uh, you know, in the emergence of the APC. He said he, he had to forego uh, his uh, presidency um, and presidential ambition at some point to let two Southwesterners emerge. And he said, um, I'd, I'd like to rephrase, that he thinks that it would have been better that Mr. President would have handed over power. The, the choice of words may not be necessarily great because, of course, they, it's debatable that he should be obviously handing over to somebody from the Southeast. And he kept saying, where is the justice? It takes me back to the question that I asked. We keep saying that we want power in the southeast. Power should come to the southeast. Asking for justice and working to get that justice are two different things. And this is what Tony, this is where Tony was coming from. Uh, that that the, the likes of the Tinubus of this world had been laying the bridge and foundation for what happened that day at the Evil Eagle Square compared to us in the other zones. Look, the, the, the reality is that uh, within the APC, there was really no serious contender from the Southeast. Because it's not you know, about uh, shouting for justice. It's not about, about uh, say, laying claims to the fact that uh, the Southeast yeah. needs a presidency or deserves a presidency. It's also about the work you do. And I agree with uh, my you know, a colleague there. Uh, you know, it is also about the work you do. It's also about your state of readiness. They were not ready. And they were not ready, perhaps, because they knew that they had not done enough to take the presidency of this country. And they had not. Who are you going to? What did, for instance, Namania, apart from, you know, the very little role that the Southeast has played within the APC, which is not enough to ensure, to give them that recognition for the presidency. Then you talk about the individual contributions of some of these people. Kenan Namani, Bonayon, Omahe, uh, uh, who has been in PDP all this while, but moved not too long ago to the APC. So what did anybody actually expect from them? There was really nothing that they could have been you know, expected. When you talk about politics for the sake of politics, then the person who had worked more, more, uh, most from the region that had done the most deserved the presidency of, uh, I mean, to run you know, uh, for the uh, candidacy of, uh, the, of the APC. And that was the Southwest, obviously. That is what it is, really. You know, so... Um, obviously, a lot needs you know to be done. And I think that the best the best uh, opportunity for the South is to was via the PDP, uh, which a lot of people have talked about. I, I mean, we even had a penny fair in Lagos talking about the South East Eastern Presidency. We had the uh, parts of the Middle Belt and even the and even the Pandem uh, from the South South talking about South East Presidency. So I think that the Southeast was so shortchanged, especially under the platform of the PDP and not under the platform of the APC. Because the APC does not have any serious major inroad in the Southeast. And so they, they had no obligation. But I think that PDP had an obligation. And it is not just about, about uh, the work you know, that uh, the Southeast did. It was about equity and justice. After all, you know, what work did Obasan do before he became president? What work did the Southwest do? to make the Obasanjo presidency possible. They didn't do much work, but it was as a result of the crisis created by the annulment of the June 12, 1993 election, which deprived the Southwest of a presidential candidate, a president of this country, M.K. Wadiola. So the political elites in the country, especially those up north, sat back and said, look, for us to have stability in the system, in this country, we must ensure that justice is done to the Yorubas because of the death of Wadiola and the deprivation of Abiola from the presidency of this country, even for an election that he won. So that was why they got together and gave it to Obasanjo. Obasanjo was not electable. Obasanjo has visibility in the country. Obasanjo has serious name recognition. But Obasanjo does not have political constituencies. He does not have political structures. 
He was in prison and did not know work. That work was done for a passenger. You know, so that was what happened. So even if you look at Jonathan, for instance, Jonathan did not have any serious constituency. He didn't have political structures in place. But it was decided that he had to go to Jonathan, I mean to the South South and to Jonathan. And, 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 the, and, the, and the political elites concerned did the work for Jonathan. Mm. So, you know, it is also about recognizing that, look, this is the time for these people, and then the work will be done, and there will be consensus. That is what is called elitist beginning. Okay. All right. Back to you, um, Charles, before we wrap things up. How long will it take for the Southeast to come of age? Because whether it be politicking, whether it be coming to... Uh, together for a certain cause. I mean, we saw what happened, I think, last year uh, during the Ohaneze uh, elections. That was the beginning of, you know, the disintegration of sorts um, within the part, within the, you know, group. We saw even politicians, governors, you know, step into that forum. And then we saw the, the divisions that happened. But when will the Southeast come of age to a point where, just like Achikia said, that, oh, it's time for power to go to these people, and then they'll be ready to receive it, structures or no structures, but then, of course, a sense of readiness. How soon or how long will it take for that to happen? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, my co-guest. Before she said, she did, he has read part of um, what I was coming to, and that is the fact that the elite manipulative theory has always been used against the South East. It is a theory in international diplomacy and politics that makes it difficult. You know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's just like what he said. If there is no moral suasion on the part of the North, and the North keeps seeing a divided South as their own advantage. I mean, until this changes, the Southeast will never come of age. We, not that we don't have the best of materials. Look at somebody like Peter Obi. People know his antecedents, they know the records, they know what he has done. Peter Obi has already begun, become a revolution in the PPC registration and collection of the entire country because of people that believe in his antecedents and policies. Now, uh, back to your question again, it is the North. It is the North. The North holds the eight. Like Mr. Shike said, when Obasanjo was given consideration under the PDP in 1999, he was in the prison. Obasanjo, in records of uh, political history, did not win his word in Abiyokuta. He didn't win. Yes, the North rallied the entire North for him, for peace to reign. And the South East, as South Eastern as you are now asking, is it too much for the North to consider for the sake of what the South East has gone through, for the sake of the civil wars and all the other factors that have come into play against the South East in the political history of this country? Is it too much for the North to also run around the South East? Is it too much for justice, which Dr. Bonanno asked for, to be done? Is it too much for the other parts of the country, particularly the North? When I say the North, People are now reducing the northern narrative to say, oh, the North East has not taken its turn. In as much as this narrative is correct, we know really what a South Eastern presidency mm. uh, in the mode of a PTOB, for instance, would have done to the country. We know what it would do to the economy, especially if the PDP, whom we have given so much to, returned it back in kindness to us to say, okay. look, be, whether you have money to share or not, we trust that you will become a rallying force to return us to power. All right. Until this is done, uh, the South East is fine. And also to my South Eastern brothers, uh, I want to also add my voice once again to say that politics has always been defined ostensibly as a game of who takes what, when, and how. If you're not ready to take politics in this ostensible definition, you are not in the game. You are just dancing around. You just want to be recognized. Okay. And I believe that most of the leaders from the South East who were in this race, were in to be recognized because they did no work and they expected uh, results. Thank you very much. Well, I want to say thank you, gentlemen. Unfortunately, time our time is uh, fast spent. Chike Chude and, of course, Charles to are uh, both political analysts. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for having this conversation with me.
All right. Well, thank you all for staying thank with you. us. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we discuss the affairs of the African Democratic Congress, ADC, as Dumebi Kachiku beats Kingsley Mogalu and Chukukamoye in its presidential primaries. We'll be right back.